Israel never expected that an African country would stand against it in such a way that it had to change its plans. From the start of the Israel-Hamas conflict, the Western countries, one by one, bowed before Israel, approving of the killings Israel has been carrying out. Little did countries offer support for Palestine. But now, as the African continent has become the center of attention, things have turned upside down. Just recently, the Algerian parliament voted unanimously to support Palestine in not just words but more than that. What is it, and is Algeria preparing to send its huge army to Palestine to fight Israel? Let's know about everything in this video because things are getting out of hand. On October 7th, the Palestinian group, Hamas, launched unexpected rocket attacks on Israel, prompting Tel Aviv to respond with daily airstrikes and a complete blockade of the Gaza Strip, cutting off vital supplies. After witnessing dire violations of human rights in Gaza, the Algerian parliament unanimously authorized President Abdelmajid Tebboune to take a decisive stance against Israel's military operations in Gaza. All members of the Algerian People's National Assembly APN, voted in favor, reflecting the consistent support of the Algerian people and their leaders for the Palestinian cause. The Algerian parliament summoned a special session in solidarity with the Palestinian objective of freedom and independence. Yemen's Houthi group also expressed its support for the Palestinians, claiming to have launched drones and rockets against Israel. These actions coincide with Israeli ground operations in the Gaza Strip, home to over 2.5 million Palestinians. Pro-Palestinian protests have erupted globally, especially in North African countries like Morocco, Algeria, Libya, and Tunisia. In October, Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Ataf urged the international community to stand with Palestine, calling for immediate action to halt Israel's aggression and revive the peace process. In Tunisia, the parliament is even drafting a bill that would deem any attempt to normalize relations with Israel an act of treason with severe penalties for offenders. Jordan, one of the Arab countries that normalized relations with Israel through the Abraham Accords, recalled its ambassador in protest of the Gaza bombardment. Bahrain also withdrew its envoy, and Morocco is reportedly under pressure to end ties. You should know that the unanimous decision by the Algerian parliament followed the anniversary of Algeria's War of Liberation against French colonialism. With this, Algeria became the second Arab nation, after Yemen, to declare war against Israel. Yemen's armed forces spokesperson, General Yahya Sarre, stated that they launched missiles and drones in support of Palestine emphasizing the Palestinian people's right to defend themselves. Arab nations, including Kuwait, Bahrain, and Jordan, have expressed support for Palestine, with Kuwait condemning Israeli aggression, Bahrain cutting diplomatic ties, and Jordan recalling its ambassador. Additionally, nations outside West Asia, such as Cuba, Chile, Venezuela, Bolivia, Nicaragua, and others, have voiced their support for Palestine. The conflict between Israel and Palestine has escalated, with Algeria and Yemen expressing their support for Palestine. The Algerian parliament has given President Abdelmajid Tebboun full voting support, enabling him to intervene in response to increasing Israeli attacks on Gaza. In other words, the Algerian president has been given full authority to make any decision of military deployment to Gaza at any time he pleases. For that, he would not need permission from the parliament. This is quite important because the Algerian parliament did not want the president to take even some time to make urgent decisions about any military deployment. Algeria now stands as the second Arab nation after Yemen to officially declare support for Palestine and confront Israel. In relation to Yemen's Houthi forces, they recently declared war on Israel, launching attacks using cruise ballistic missiles and drones on targets in Eilat and Eritrea. The Houthis' involvement aligns them with the axis of resistance led by Iran. You should know that the Palestinian cause often serves as a rallying point for Islamist organizations, bringing together factions like Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. The Houthis, who control significant portions of Yemen, leverage the conflict to increase their support base and unite people against Israel. The involvement of Algeria and Yemen adds complexity to an already volatile situation raising the potential for a broader regional conflict with unpredictable outcomes. 
despite the international community's call for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. There are no signs of de-escalation. Earlier, Algeria's Foreign Minister Ahmed Ataf called on the international community to stand in support of the Palestinians, expressing complete solidarity as the Israel-Hamas conflict escalates. Speaking during the 20th session of the Ministerial Meeting of African and Nordic Countries in Algiers, Ataf highlighted the dire humanitarian conditions faced by the people in the Gaza Strip. Algeria urged immediate international action to assist the oppressed and persecuted, bring an end to the aggression, and restart the peace process. What's more, the conflict between Israel and the Palestinian militant group Hamas has triggered pro-Palestinian solidarity demonstrations across North African countries, including Algeria, Libya, and Morocco. Later, Algeria's Supreme Security Council issued a statement rejecting occupation operations against defenseless civilians and emphasizing solidarity with the Palestinian people. This is quite a rare moment when the Supreme Court of a country is giving verdicts in support of the people of Palestine. They express the conviction that the radical solution does not lie in genocide or forced displacement, but rather in establishing the Palestinian state. Algeria's strong connection with Palestine has deep historical and emotional roots. On November 15, 1988, leaders of the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, led by Yasser Arafat, assembled to declare independence. Since then, Algerian authorities consistently provided robust political, financial, and diplomatic support to the PLO, advocating for an end to the Israeli occupation. It's because in the Islamic world, the Palestinian cause is considered sacred and successive Algerian administrations resisted concessions despite international pressure. In 2021, President Abdelmajid Tebboune emphasized that Palestine is the mother of all causes and declined to join or endorse the Abraham Accords, perceiving them as insufficient in addressing the root causes of the conflict. In response to news about Hamas's attacks, President Tebboune promptly communicated with his Palestinian counterpart, Mahmoud Abbas. Political leaders and the Algerian parliament aligned with his official position in condemning the Israeli occupation. Algeria's Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued an official statement condemning Israeli practices in Gaza and urging the international community to take responsibility. This stance was reinforced following the attack on a Palestinian hospital, reportedly resulting in the deaths of over 500 innocent civilians. Algerian authorities provided urgent and substantial humanitarian aid to Gaza through Egypt and refrained from attending the Cairo Summit for Peace due to the possible presence of an Israeli delegation. Not only that, but the Algerian public has reacted to the ongoing humanitarian crisis in Gaza, responding to a collective call from major political parties and civil society organizations. Thousands of citizens mobilized across various cities and regions, denouncing Israeli attacks and expressing dissatisfaction with the paralysis of the international community when Israel continues to terrorize people. The Palestinian cause remains among the few policy issues with unanimous support within the Algerian political system and society. Protesters channeled their frustration primarily towards Western powers, including the United States and European countries, reflecting a widespread regional sentiment about perceived Western double standards. While discussions on the Abraham Accords may resurface after the ongoing conflict concludes, the cost of normalization is expected to rise and the Palestinian cause will remain a crucial component of any future deal. For countries with a hard and fast anti-normalization stance like Algeria, authorities will approach the prospects of a genuine and just peace process with skepticism, even if they have limited means to impede it. Consequently, Algeria will likely emphasize the importance of continuing support for the Palestinians, leading an anti-occupation campaign at international organizations, particularly the UN. Authorities will also seek to drive multilateral actions and engage regional stakeholders, including states and organizations like the Arab League and Organization of Islamic Cooperation. In fact, Foreign Minister Ataf's recent mission in New York aimed at coordinating joint plans with these organizations to find an urgent solution that serves the humanitarian needs of the people of Gaza. Here, Israel should learn from the historical errors committed by the French in Algeria, and President Biden should take lessons from President Kennedy's moral and practical support for a people's struggle for liberation from occupation. 
On May 7, 1945, following Nazi Germany's signing of the act of military surrender to the Allies, people around the globe, including those in occupied Algeria, celebrated the end of World War II. Approximately 134,000 Algerians had fought alongside the Allies, with 18,000 sacrificing their lives to defeat Germany. On May 8, 1945, in Satif, east of Algiers, about 5,000 Muslims, as the colonial power labeled Algerians to erase their national identity, marched in celebration. However, they also demanded an end to French colonial rule, which lasted over a century. French police intervened, seizing banners and eventually opening fire, resulting in the deaths of demonstrators. Clashes ensued, leading to the killing of 102 French settlers. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. In the following weeks, French authorities and settlers engaged in a bloodbath, massacring approximately 45,000 Algerians. Rural areas sympathetic to Algerian nationalists were bombarded by the French Air Force around Satif and the town of Guelma. Settlers sought revenge by hunting down and lynching the savages. To justify their presence in Algeria, colonists dehumanized the indigenous population, viewing them as little more than animals. This dehumanization allowed French colonists and their occupation army to kill thousands of Algerians with minimal moral questions. While the Satif massacre brought about nine years of relative peace for the colonial power, it ultimately solidified the Algerian perseverance for freedom. On November 1, 1954, they initiated their ultimate war of resistance against French occupation. After eight years of what British historian Alistair Horne called a savage war of peace, Algeria secured its independence but at a heavy cost. The lives of around 1.5 million Algerians, constituting approximately 20% of Algeria's Muslim population. What's happening in Gaza is not much different than what happened in Algeria under French rule. Most colonial powers follow a set pattern, where colonizers dehumanize indigenous populations to justify brutal force against resistance. Colonizers assume that the lack of military prowess in the colonized also implies a lack of strength and resolve to resist oppression and defeat occupation. When they realize their misjudgment and acknowledge the inability to sustain their position indefinitely, they intensify brutality to preserve the status quo. This pattern unfolded in occupied Algeria during the latter years of French rule and it is happening in occupied Palestine today. When France responded to the killing of 102 settlers by carpet bombing villages and killing tens of thousands of people, its goal extended beyond avenging the deaths of its citizens and eliminating terrorists. The objective was to use extreme violence to crush all native resistance and break their will to resist. In the current war on Gaza, Israel appears to be following a similar pattern the apparent goal is not solely to avenge the deaths of Israeli civilians and military personnel on October 7th. If revenge were the primary motive, the killing of over 8,000 Palestinian children and babies and reducing most of the strip to rubble would likely have sufficed for Israel to stop. Eliminating all terrorists or annihilating Hamas doesn't seem to be the primary goal either. Israel's leaders likely recognize that even if they could eliminate all terrorists in Gaza, it would not erase Palestinian aspirations for liberty and their resolve to resist the occupation. So, if the aim is not revenge or eliminating terrorists, Israel seems to be executing a multifaceted plan to protect, entrench, and expand its colonial enterprise. The plan involves first breaking the Palestinian will and spirit, demonstrating that Israel can act with total impunity, regardless of international condemnation. The second step is to order Palestinians to leave their homes and land, pushing them toward a vaguely defined safe zone. After displacement, Israel declared that Hamas was present in the safe zone and proceeded to bomb it. This cycle repeats until the entire strip is destroyed and surviving Palestinians are pushed out into the Egyptian Sinai. Israel appears committed to completing this plan unless Western governments, particularly the US, intervene to halt the massacre. Notably, during France's efforts to maintain its occupation in Algeria, then US President John F. Kennedy made a significant intervention. 
he openly supported Algerian independence, condemning colonialism and contributing to the success of Algeria's liberation struggle. Kennedy expressed his stance even before becoming president, delivering a historic speech in July 1957, criticizing the Eisenhower administration's support for French colonialism and advocating for Algerian self-determination. The most powerful force in the world today isn't communism or capitalism, neither the H-bomb nor the guided missile. It is humanity's enduring desire to be free and independent, he asserted. As a result, the most critical test of American foreign policy today lies in how we address the challenge of imperialism and the actions we take to advance humanity's yearning for freedom. He went on to elaborate on how the French insistence on ruling over Algeria against the will of the Algerian people has detrimental effects on the US, NATO, and the entire global community. He concluded that the time has come for the United States to confront the harsh realities of the situation and fulfill its responsibilities as the leader of the free world. In the UN, in NATO, in the administration of our aid programs, and in the exercise of our diplomacy, in charting a course toward political independence for Algeria. Kennedy recognized that France was entangled in a war it could never win and urged the U.S. to be candid with its ally. Today, history seems to be repeating itself. A crucial U.S. ally, Israel, is caught in a conflict it cannot prevail over against a population suffering under its occupation. However, unlike Kennedy, the current U.S. President Joe Biden is not rising to the occasion. Instead of conveying the harsh truth to Israel that it cannot extinguish the Palestinian people's eternal desire to be free and independent, President Biden is unconditionally supporting the ongoing colonial assault on Palestine. Just as France was not defending itself when it killed hundreds of thousands of Algerians to suppress their quest for independence, Israel isn't defending itself against Palestinians living under its occupation. It is waging a modern-day colonial war striving to acquire more land and seemingly committing genocide in the process. Biden should heed Kennedy's example, cease its support for Israel's unwinnable war and war crimes, and align with the right side of history. Today, despite the growing global demand for a ceasefire in Israel's war on Gaza, the West staunchly supports Tel Aviv's scorched earth ambitions. The Algerian experience provides insights into parallels and divergences with the ongoing Palestinian national liberation struggle. It illustrates that imposing a ceasefire might unintentionally breed more violence it intends to suppress. Additionally, a dispassionate rejection of violence can deny the oppressed their dignity, whether in surrender or self-liberation. Today, Algeria sees itself in Palestinians who are facing what Algerians did decades ago. France's colonization of Algeria unfolded in phases. The conquest, lasting from 1830 to 1870, involved unforgettable mass atrocities resembling later Zionist actions in Palestine. French militants obliterated entire villages, belated their inhabitants, and seized their livestock and crops. In 1870, the second phase saw civilian settlers from the French metropole gradually taking control of Algerian land. These settlements operated under discriminatory laws known as the Indigenous Legal Code, stripping Algerians of protections enjoyed by European settlers. In post-1870, settlers faced intermittent uprisings. Some French voices advocated for a reformist approach, granting limited rights to a select group of Algerians considered civilized. However, the true aim was to divide the Algerian masses from their political leaders, undermining support for Algerian political autonomy. This overview of Algerian colonization may resonate with those familiar with key points in Palestinian history, from the Nakba in 1948 to the Unity Uprising. Following World War II, the repression of Algerians was harsh, characterized by a decade of widespread massacres. The French army, air force, police, and settler militias mercilessly killed thousands of Arab civilians. France dropped 41 tons of explosives on insurgent areas within a decade. Despite being underreported, conservative estimators suggest around 10,000 Algerian casualties. The collective trauma inflicted on Algeria strengthened the conviction among Algerian nationalists that national independence from France was the sole viable path forward, self-liberation by any means necessary. That's why Algerian President Abdelmajid Tebboune emphasized that the Palestinians, in his view, are not terrorists, 
Rather, they are defending their land and legitimate rights. He condemned the killings in Gaza, characterizing them as war crimes and crimes against humanity. Taboon drew historical parallels to Algeria's struggle against colonialism when Algerians were labeled terrorists. Now, things have gotten out of hand as the Algerian parliament has authorized the president to declare war on Israel. At any moment, he can send the military to Gaza to fight Israel. Or perhaps it will be like what Yemen's Houthi rebels are doing to support Palestine. Just recently, the Houthi movement in Yemen downed a United States drone over a week after effectively declaring war on Israel, sparking concerns of a regional escalation. This move by the Iran-linked group, controlling vast areas in Yemen, coincides with Tel Aviv's ongoing bombings of the Gaza Strip. The Yemeni group has initiated three rounds of attacks on Israel since the October 7 Hamas assault that claimed the lives of at least 1,405 Israelis, on October 31st, Yahya Sari, a military spokesperson for the Houthis, declared that the movement launched a substantial number of rockets, ballistic missiles, and drones toward Israel. He stated that more streakers would follow until the Israeli aggression stops and Palestinians emerge victorious. Known of the projectiles fired at the Red Sea tourist resort of Eilat are believed to have reached Israel, either intercepted by defense systems or falling short. Israel reported destroying a drone over the Red Sea. For the first time since the outbreak of the war with Hamas, Israel utilized its aero defense system designed to intercept ballistic missiles outside the Earth's atmosphere, according to its military. On October 27, drone has caused explosions in two Egyptian Red Sea towns near the Israeli border, with Tel Aviv alleging that the Houthis had launched drones and missiles intended for Israel. The United States military mentioned in late October that a Navy warship in the Northern Red Sea intercepted projectiles launched by the Houthis, potentially targeting Israel. It appears that Algeria would likely do what Yemen's Houthi rebels are doing. However, if it adopts a bold strategy, considering the deep ties it has with Palestine and a history resonating with that of Palestine's struggle, a direct military deployment can be expected. The president of Algeria might use his special powers to deploy the military to Gaza, becoming a direct part of the conflict. The Algerian president would not need permission or the mandate of the parliament because he has already gotten it. Now, the decision to send a huge military to Gaza or not is to be taken by this one man. That's why the whole of the Western world and Israel have their eyes on him. What do you think? Will Algeria's army directly fight against Israel and Palestine? Should an African country like Algeria offer its maximum support in the form of military deployment to Palestine? Let us know your thoughts on how Israel would respond to that. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.